hello everybody. Uh, I introduce myself first for uh, just a couple of minutes. I'm, uh, my name is Alberto Recupero uh, from the company Studio.com, who is an Italian consultancy firm uh, which help uh, small medium businesses to find customers on the international markets. Uh, even some of you know me as the expert manager to a winery in Valpolicella named Zime. But today we are not talking about uh, uh, Studio Comodine, uh, but uh, we're talking about Japan. Uh, I hope not to be rhetorical, but uh, Japan is, uh, uh, is truly in my heart. And uh, uh, I've lived there for a, a few years, uh, uh, initially selling wine to restaurants, and then uh, as a restaurant manager to a, uh, a high-class restaurant named Riva degli Etruschi in Tokyo. So uh, Japanese market since then uh, have changed a lot. And uh, uh, in the last few years, uh, uh, I would say that uh, uh, it becomes sometimes difficult for Italian wineries to, to work uh, properly. And uh, so that's why we decided to uh, highlight the feature of Japanese market first. And, uh, uh, and mostly the, um, uh, the possibility, the solutions, the opportunity that can uh, uh, come from this market, uh, even today, even in this very peculiar uh, year and, uh, and period. So I don't want to steal too much time uh, uh, from uh, the real topic. So uh, I will, uh, we will start with, uh, with, with Maria Asda, uh, who is uh, one of, uh, uh, the most um, uh, prominent wine journalist uh, uh, in Japan, and she's, she writes for uh, uh, Vino Joy News, uh, who those of who are familiar with our webinar already knows as, uh, as a magazine. And, uh, and then uh, she will uh, kind of outline uh, the, the Japanese market and uh, with the figures and numbers and uh, uh, she will give a, a, a really clear picture of the market before going into more detail with the other panelists. So uh, thank you, uh, Yasda-san. Uh, please join us uh, and uh, we are eager to learn from you. Thank you, Alberto. So I'm Maria Suda, wine writer and educator. Today, I want to give an overview about the wine markets in Japan. Alberto, can I share the documents? Yeah, yes, please. Uh, you, you can do it with the uh, share screen button on the, on the, on the bar. Yeah. Is Go it ahead. okay? Yes, you're doing that. Now it's, uh, it's going online slowly. Okay, that's it. Okay. Yes, perfect. You're in. Okay, thank you very much. So firstly, this graph shows the trend of volume of alcohol, alcohols to which alcohol taxes are imposed. 1970, 1975, 1980, 1985, 1989, and yearly result, uh, sorry, yearly result from 1993 to 2018. The total volume of alcohols to which alcohol taxes are imposed hit the highest record in 1999 with 10,166,000 kiloliters. Since then, the volume is gradually decreasing. The result of 2018 was 8,684,000 kiloliters, which is around 15% decrease from 1999. Beer accounts for 28.5%, liquor 27.6%, and wine share is 4.2%. This is the claim of wine consumption in Japan from 1972 to, to 2018. Total wine consumption in 2018 was around 352,000 kiloliters, 3.3 percent decrease compared with 2017. Consumption of imported wine was around 233,000 kiloliters accounting for 66 to 66.2% of total. And that of domestically made wines was around 118,000 kiloliters, 33.8% of total. 
consumption per capita was 2.85 liter. In these more than 40 years, there are seven wine booms in Japan. Currently, we are facing the seventh wine boom, which started in 2012. This boom was led by inexpensive wines imported from Chile or other countries. And this graph shows the trend of import volume of steel wines. This is focusing on the steel wines packed in less than two liters. This is Chile, France, and Italy. In 2019, total imported volume was around 176,000 kiloliters, which is 6% increase from the previous year. Total volume of Italian wines was 35,000 kiloliters, which account for 20.1% of total import volume of steel wines. In September 2009, EPA, Economic Partnership Agreement between Chile and Japan came into effect. The duty of wines was decided to be reduced to 0% step by step over 30 years. The imported volume of Chilean wines increased gradually, and in 2015, the imported volume of Chilean wines ex exceeded that of French wines, which had been the number one imported volume. Japan EU EPA came into effect in February 2019, and the duty was completely eliminated immediately. As a result, the import volume of wines from EU countries increased in 2019. Italy, 17.4% increased compared with the previous year. France, 11.6% increase. Spain, 16.2% increase. And Germany shows the highest increase last year of 44.3 percent. However, in 2019, Chile still kept the number one position, even, even though the import volume from Chile decreased by 8 percent compared to 2018. It's the fifth consecutive year for Chile to record the number one import volume. The duty on Chilean wines was finally completely eliminated in April 2019. For your reference, duty of wines are 15% of CIF, or 120 yen, equal to around one euro per liter, whichever is cheaper, and 67 yen, equal to around 0 0.5 euro per liter, is the lower limit. This means that around 94 yen, around 0 0.7 euro, for one full bottle at the maximum. For the wines at liter up to eight euro, consumers can feel that EU wines have become cheaper, but for premium wines, the influence, influence is limited. On the other hand, for sparkling wines, a duty of 182 yen equal to 1.4 euro was imposed. This can have a greater impact. Then, this graph shows the trend of import volume of sparkling wines. Again, France, Italy, and Spain, uh, France, Spain, and Italy. Italy is a green one. In 2019, total import volume of sparkling wines around 44,000 kiloliters, which is 21.3% increase from the previous year. As you can see, the import volume of sparkling wines continued to increase. In 2019, total volume was more than doubled from that of 2009. Mainly, a sparkling wine of less than 2,000 yen, less than 16 euro, are going strong. Total volume of Italian sparkling wines was around 9,000 kiloliters, which accounts for 20% of total volume of imported sparkling wines. Thanks to the elimination of duty between EU and Japan, import volume of sparkling wines from EU increased in 2019. Import from France increased by 11.6%. Spain shows a significant increase of 47.9%, while Italy shows 27.3% increase. Next, two graphs 
show the trend of import volume of Italian wines only. Let me repeat again for still wines, 70.4% increase compared with the previous year, and for sparkling wines, 27.3% increase. Then, this graph shows the sales of still wines per channel in 2019. This data is extracted from a credit management named ONES, April issue of this year. The left graph shows the result of total of major 11 countries, while the right one shows the result of only Italian wines. The leadership for restaurants and birds can be considered as on plate. As, in, as you can see from these graphics, the share of on plate in Italian wine sales is 52%, which is much bigger than that of other wines. For your reference, the share of on plate of Chilean wine is 15%, France 32%, Spain 25%, US 39%, Australia 35%. This graph shows the trend of the number of Italian restaurants in Japan. In 2014, around 8,000 Italian restaurants are registered in Japan. For your reference, the number of French restaurants in Japan in 2014 was around 7,500. This means that the number of Italian restaurants is even much more than that of French restaurants. This may be one reason for a large share of on plate sales of Italian wines. However, it is said that the number of Italian restaurants is saturated now. A potential will be in the category of off trade. This table shows the sales result of the number of cases of Italian wines by legal price range. This is the result of on trade. And this is of gray, the number of cases, share, and this is total. As you can see, the volume zone is 4 to 8 euro and 8 to 12 euro. Especially the volume of 4 to 8 euro increased compared with 2018. Another highlight is that the premium range is increasing. The volume of 24 to 40 euro and 40 to 80 euro increased compared with the previous year. In addition, the volume of home consumption increased by 25% compared with the previous year. This also supports a potential for off trade. This graph shows the result of the nationwide panel survey of household consumption conducted by Intage. This, is this data is extracted from an industry journal, Shuhan News. This shows from where consumers purchase alcoholic beverages. Both in 2019 and 2018, supermarkets are the biggest channel to purchase alcoholic beverages. This graph focuses on wines. Still, supermarkets are the biggest channel to purchase wines but compared to the previous graphs, which shows total of alcoholic beverage, for wines, consumers in their 30s and 50s purchase more via supermarkets. The other highlight is the category of others. This one, this, this one. Others, which includes online sales. For wines, the ratio of 17% is much higher than that for total alcoholic beverage, which showed 9%. These trends can be seen over all generations. It can be said that online sales have potential for wines. At the end, I'd like to point out one concern for wine industry. It is an increase of alcohol tax for wines. Currently, as, as an alcohol tax, 120 yen per liter is imported to the sake, while for wines, 80 yen per liter is imposed. The government judged this is not fair and decided to increase the alcohol tax of wines while decrease that of sake. 
the adjustment will be carried out in two phases. Firstly, in October this year, alcohol tax of wines will be increased to 90 yen per liter. Then, in October 2023, it will be increased to 100 yen per liter. To summarize, in Japanese market, on plate has been a main sales channel of Italian wines. However, off plate channel is to be developed more in the near future. Supermarket or online may have a potential. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Asuna san. It was very, very enlightening. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the impression I had is that uh, for a long time, uh, Italian wineries at least uh, uh, really focus their uh, activities, promotional activities and uh, uh, attention on the uh, uh, on trade uh, consumption uh, because uh, the number of restaurants in Japan has always been uh, uh, huge. I remember when I, when I was doing sales there and uh, only in Tokyo there was uh, uh, 3,500 uh, restaurants. So it's a uh, uh, but the uh, situation has changed a lot and consumption we saw is uh, uh, moved also a lot on the, on the off trade. So I, I believe that we need to, to think about this. Eh? So, um, uh, and I think that uh, uh, Mr. Thierry Cohen uh, is going to, uh, to enlighten us also on this, uh, on this aspect. Uh, uh, please unmute and uh, join us. Thank you very much for being here first, first of all. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Alberto, for, for this occasion. And uh, I think Yasser-san gave some very good uh, insights on, on the market. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Imports, which was very interesting. Um, but from the import, I'm Terry Cohen. We, we are working at Japan Year of Trading. We've been in Japan for 38 years, 39 years, importing Italian food and wine, so specializing in Italian products. <clears throat> we have offices from Sapporo and Hokkaido all the way down to Okinawa. And we distribute in both restaurants and uh, retail uh, <coughs> outlets in, in the country. So there, there are, of course, many uh, issues uh, to talk about. So in 15 minutes, you have to sort of uh, focus on the main ones. And, and, and I see three, three main problems uh, that we have. And I, unlike uh, Yasuo-san, I don't have any beautiful charts. So you're just going to have to look at my face while, while, I, while I talk here. Um, but uh, so the, the, the first issue, which actually Yasu-san also showed in her graphs, is that the market is not a growing market. Um, it's, the, the growth of the last 20 years has been very, very limited. It happened twice. And the last time was in 2012 when the prices of wine went down. But since then, we have been stuck at the 20 million cases, uh, nine liter cases a year. Um, plus or minus five, ten percent, but kind of staying there for still wine, um, <clears throat> and that represents about three, four bottles of wine per person per year, which most people listening in today probably do that in one night or maximum one week. But that's what the Japanese consume in one year. So we are talking about a very limited uh, market size, um, and uh, because it doesn't grow. It, you have to imagine what happens is that all of these wineries go to Japan to all of these events, whether they're um, uh, exhibitions or, or uh, Gambler Rosso or whatever you have, but we are all fighting for a market that is not moving. So uh, that, uh, that can be very frustrating, of course. Uh, it means that um, the, uh, the, the restaurant business, uh, which for Italy represents 50% of all imports, is extremely competitive and, and sommeliers are not at all loyal to a brand. So everybody is offering free glasses, free buckets, free seminars, free this and whatever you can do it, a special discount, um, specifically because restaurants have the upper hand in deciding what they want because, um, because the demand is not really growing. Um, so that that can be a big block for, for, for people trying to get into Japan because it's a very crowded market in a market that is not increasing. Um, the retail side, which again for Italian wine is 50%, is uh, unfortunately we are very weak because if you look at the whole Italian, uh, the whole wine market, 
67% uh, of that is retail, but in the Italian case, it's only 50%. That means uh, Italy managed to maintain their 19, 20% market share thanks to the sheer number of Italian restaurants that exist in Japan. But, um, uh, but in retail, we are extremely weak. The only place in retail that we are strong is department stores in particular, uh, uh, where Italian wines are good, but it, department stores is a very, very small segment of the market. Um, and this comes for many reasons, but one of them is that the, the, the wine market in Japan is controlled in large part to uh, beer makers, very large companies, whether it's Santori or Kirin or, or whoever uh, out there. So they're not so interested in promoting any country's wine they're, 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 once they get inside uh, and they have a space on the shelf, they'll go ahead and sell it. So when Chilean wine became very cheap in 2012, they pushed it very strongly and they're not particularly motivated to switch to Italian wine or, 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 any, con or any other country's wine. So, um, so, so that, that, that kind of puts a, a plafond, a ceiling on how much the market can move up. Now with the EPA, um, that we talked about earlier on. Um, we all hoped that because the lower duties was going to prove very advantageous to, uh, to Italian wine, but unfortunately um, that was not the case. First, because in the retail side, uh, the people who have their Chilean wine on the shelf have no motivation to risk losing the business by introducing another country's wine. So if they already had Chilean wine inside, they just kept on supplying it. Uh, rather than proposing an Italian wine, then you might go to somebody else. But also because um, the, 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 uh, the the duty on the mark uh, in proportion to the cost of the wine is really not uh, really not that significant for 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 the at least the upper the upper end wines as we mentioned before. Um, so the difference came to be maybe thirty yen, forty yen a bottle. That did not make uh, a big enough difference, especially because over the years. Uh, people have not, importers have not been able to pass on any increase in, in costs and therefore uh, they were trying to maybe uh, maintain their margin. So, so the market, that's the first point. So the market is, is, is not a growing one. Um, Italy manages to keep its market share of 20%, 19, 20% of the year, thanks to the number of Italian restaurants. Um, um, but uh, you go from there. So the, the second point is the deflation aspect of Japan, which is really unique to uh, to Japan, um, it's the biggest fear of all the the, the big bankers, um, Federal Reserve, and and uh, and everyone else around the world that their countries are going to become like Japan. Uh, you have to imagine a country where, for the last uh, 20, 30 years, you have had practically no inflation at all. Um, you've had deflation for, for, for many, many years. And in fact, this was one of the, the biggest failures of, of the Abe uh, administration who had pledged to bring 2% inflation within two years. And unfortunately, uh, up to today, that never happened. So what happens in a moment of deflation and in a market that is not increasing is um, that people uh, have to, importers have to manage uh, importers or restaurants or all business have to manage to survive uh, and uh, absorb any increase in costs. So that can be very, very tough because uh, most wineries uh, in, the, in Italy will come up with some reason why the, they should increase prices, however insignificant, 1% a year, 2% a year. Uh, this year the wine crop was not good or the, the cost of glass is going up or the electricity is going up. And these, these might all be acceptable uh, reasons for increasing your prices in any other country. But since the importer uh, or the restaurateur or the shop is not, will not pass on the increase in cost to the consumer, it means that it's extremely challenging uh, and uh, for an importer to accept any form of price increase. Uh, and, and the moment it, that an importer says, okay, hey, I want to increase my prices, the restaurant, the wholesaler, the retailer will just go out and say, oh, by the way, this person wants to increase his prices. Who would like to give me a wine at, this, at, at the previous price? 
um, and and this is a this is really as I say unique, and it's not about wine; it's about everything in in the food and wine business. Uh, today we have a, a, a big issue in uh, tomato prices. The harvest is today, and 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 uh, there's a there's a scarcity of tomatoes for for many reasons, and and some importers have tried to increase their prices by three yen a tin of tomatoes, and I have so many retailers coming to us saying this guy wanted to increase it, what price can you do it for? And so th this, this is a, uh, it's a problem because import uh, suppliers, wine suppliers find it um, hard to understand why they shouldn't eventually increase their prices. Um, but uh, it, uh, uh, importers just cannot accept it. And then second, it also means that the more you have, if you do have an increase in cost, you have to limit your promotional budget which then goes contrary to trying to sell more in the retail or restaurant. So it's a double-edged sword. So I suggest anybody who tries to come to Japan has to go with a very, very long-term view, understanding that they are not going to increase their prices for 10 years or so, and somehow manage to um, themselves absorb, like Japanese people do, absorb any increasing costs by somehow increasing their sales. And with that extra margin from the new sales, finding a way to absorb um, the increase in costs. So that's, uh, as I say, it's very, 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 very unique to Japan and most suppliers do not want to believe or find it very hard to understand, but, but that is the case in Japan. And the third issue, of course, is the current issue of the coronavirus. So this, this has been extremely tough on everyone like everywhere else in the world. Um, it's been tough on Italian wines in particular this year because we are so focused on restaurants. And from uh, January was, was, of course, a good month. February, uh, we saw uh, that restaurants were operating more or less at the same level as last year. But March, April, May, was they were operating at minus 50, minus 60 percent, which, of course, is huge and, and very, very difficult for restaurants to survive because most of their costs are fixed costs and the government was not so generous in, in helping them out. Uh, June, the country reopened uh, officially, got out of the Japanese version of lockdown, and, uh, but it was very short-lived uh, because all of a sudden cases came up. So June was maybe minus 30% in July as well. And August, all of a sudden, Japan started having much, much higher cases than they had before, small compared to many European countries but uh, for Japan, very shocking. And as soon as that happens, uh, people, uh, the government tells people do not go out to restaurants, or at least if you do go, last orders is at 10 o'clock at night. And people just are very scared. And they certainly feel an obligation towards other people around them uh, not to try to do what they can, not to spread the, um, <clears throat> not to spread the virus. Uh, the, the, what we just saw in, in Berlin over the weekend is unthinkable in Japan that people would demonstrate and saying that the virus is is fake news and that we should open up. So people are uh, respect the, the 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 lawmakers and respect other people around them, and therefore uh, they are reluctant to go out to restaurants um, and drink wine. So that uh, today I don't see. Of course, nobody knows how long this coronavirus will last, but for sure, uh, restaurants are. are are suffering quite a bit and because Italian wine is so strong <clears throat> in the restaurant in the uh, on-premise business um, of course Italian wines will will unfortunately suffer uh, yeah. more than, than other countries so what would you recommend okay of course uh, uh, you were saying and uh, not on uh, not to increase uh, prices because uh, otherwise uh, uh, importers and, uh, and distributors uh, lack uh, neck uh, uh, the effective effectiveness of uh, of the uh, sales action. So, of course, this is a very a sensitive topic, and of course, every, uh, each one we should uh, uh, make uh, uh, the calculations. But uh, beside that, when uh, when talking about like uh, uh, promotional and marketing activities, uh, uh, what I fear is that people and um, wineries just uh, uh, invest money on something which is not effective. So. Uh, 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 from uh, the perspective of an importer, uh, what would you recommend wineries to invest on to, to help you and support you? Well, because you cannot visit the country, um, yeah. the, the most obvious one is, and that is a, a, something very new in Japan, I, I suppose the rest of the world, is these webinars, you know, these yeah. wine seminars. Um, 
they're not necessarily cheap because you need to, you can't just talk about a wine, you have to drink it. So you have to find a way to help your, your, your supplier, your importer to distribute the wine so that you can, that you can drink it while listening to the winery owner. But we've done that before. We've had several times this year, some winery owner going through a whole tasting and, uh, and leading, leading a group of people, whether it's five, 10 or 20 people, whether it's restaurant people, consumers, or many other possibilities. But you have to supply the wine because you know you, you don't just want to hear about a fantastic winery in, in, in Piemonte or wherever. You want to actually drink it while, while you're listening to that. So, so it, it is a little bit tricky, but I think that today it's probably the most effective tool for, for consumers, for wholesalers, for, for uh, even restauranters to try to understand more about wines and feel that the presence of the winery owners and not just not just the import. Are you able to make like kind of small gatherings, like uh, small wine testings with like professional? It, it's very difficult. They, they are so difficult. wary about it. Uh, they're so wary about it. And uh, and and if the, the constant worry in Japan um, from a Japanese mentality is imagine if somebody caught the virus at that seminar your company would be finished forever yeah yeah of course yeah that's no, clear. nobody's going to risk the and of course you probably won't even be able to to know where it originated from but just the risk the possibility that you might have caught it yeah, of course okay okay and later with dario uh, we are, are going to go into much more details about this so it's uh, uh, okay, thank you for the moment, uh, uh, Mr. Cran. It was very, very, very useful because uh, we need to understand how is the situation. We uh, we don't just need to uh, fairy tale. So, you know, it's a, a, a Japanese market is uh, uh, going through a very uh, long-lasting um, struggle from somehow, at least for uh, for Italian uh, wines. Uh, from our perspective, uh, there is still much to uh, to do, but uh, we, we we need to understand first. Uh, so we, now we, um, we ask Mr. Rotner to, to join and uh, uh, he's going to, to share with us his thoughts and understanding of uh, Japanese market and uh, online sales, which is in this, especially in this, uh, in this year, uh, in other, other countries, it was so crucial to, to, uh, to wine sales. Uh, thank you, Roddy, to be with us. Okay. Good evening, and uh, thank you, Alberto. Let me let me just put up the uh, screen. Um, yeah. Share. Yeah. Okay. Share screen. Uh, uh, in the meanwhile, yeah. uh, we will save some minutes at the end right. for uh, for Q and A, uh, question and answers. So please uh, use uh, event eventually. You can use the button on the on the. Uh, on the Zoom bar, a Q and A button, so you can uh, uh, write your answer, uh, your question even now, and then we will uh, uh, answer it at the end. Okay, thank you. Okay, is that screen now shared? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, yeah, okay. oh, oh, uh, my name's Roddy. Uh, I write for Miningers Wine Business International, and uh, over the last couple of years, I've done a series of seven articles about the Japanese wine market, and by uh, coincidence. The most recent one was about Japan's online wine market. And actually, this was planned before the pandemic took place. So um, what I've got is about eight slides. And you can look, uh, those are the, the headings for each of the slides while you look through those. I just want to mention that I'm going to quote some figures, not as many as uh, Mari, but uh, just use them with a sort of take them with a pinch of salt because everything has changed and it's changing yeah, yeah. every week. But they give you some idea of the scale of, of um, the numbers. And the idea of the presentation is really to give people some uh, something to talk about with importers or retailers. Because as I've been visiting wineries, a lot of people are not quite sure what's happening to their wine in Japan or how to approach the market. So this just gives you some name and some themes. And then, uh, most of the uh, presentation has come as a result of in interviewing about 20 people in July. So that is. Uh, everybody from wine producers um, through to retailers, uh, all connected to the Japanese market. And it's not limited to um, Italian wine, because I thought it would be quite interesting to see what other countries and other wineries are doing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. So uh, the first point is that um, in Japan, if you're, people have been to Japan, you know that uh, cash is king. People carry around huge amounts of money, and if they go to those restaurants, it's not unusual to be asked to to pay in cash. But despite that, uh, Japan is actually the fourth largest 
e-commerce market in the world, after the USA, uh, China, and the UK, believe it or not. Um, so uh, although the cash is very big, the e-market you know, for, for all retail sales is actually very big. When you look at wine e-commerce, uh, worldwide, the figure was given of around 4%. I, I put up 3.6%. That was a figure quoted by the International Wine and Spirit Records uh, for a couple of years ago, 2018. Of course, it would have changed now. Um, there's a figure given for wine e-commerce uh, of about 5.6%. That figure is given by uh, One's Review, the magazine that Mary mentioned. Um, well, five, around 6% of retail sales in 2019 are online. But of course, those are just averages. So it gives us uh, perhaps a better to get some idea of the market by talking about individuals and individual companies. So uh, I'm sure everyone's heard of uh, Jacob's Creek, a brand, a national brand owned by Pano Ricard. They say that only about 2% of their sales uh, in Japan are online. If you look at um, Yamaya, which is one of the most important retailers with over 300 shops across Japan, they have only about 3% of their sales are online. If you look at Eon, which is Japan's larger supermarket chain, they have about 5%. Uh, we're going to talk about a smaller re family owned retailer later called Imadeya. They have five shops, uh, one in Ginza, and they have about 10% of sales online. And then maybe a company that most people will have heard of is uh, Enoteca, which is probably the, the best known of the sort of um, premium retailers. Uh, they quote a figure of 35% for their online sales. So uh, we'll talk about them later, but they've kind of embraced this already, uh, online sales. So that's just to give you an idea. You've got to spread from Yamaya at 3 to Enoteca at 35%. So one of the things that's very important for the Japanese market is the online platforms, uh, so-called uh, online shopping malls. And of course, uh, you won't be surprised to hear that Amazon is the, the, the leading shopping mall. But the biggest competitor is Rakuten. And Rakuten uh, was founded in 1997, and it's a Japanese company. And uh, they're a, a very uh, good competitor for uh, Amazon uh, in terms of sales and the number of customers they have. And actually the third, um, the third company that most of the, the um, wine merchants will use is Yahoo Japan. So wine merchants are using these shopping malls alongside their own standalone uh, websites, obviously because Amazon, Rakuten, Yahoo help to attract more customers. Um, and typically uh, a wine retailer will use two or more of these. Each of these uh, companies, Amazon, Rakuten, Yahoo have, have different business models. And so most people will use two or more. But what I thought was interesting is that many people mentioned that they got quite high, well, comparatively higher sales through Rakuten. That could be because Rakuten has been around for over 20 years, and it could be because they have a, a, a loyalty point system. So you can buy wine, and then you can use points to, uh, to buy something else online. I think the other thing that is important, so apart from the online platform, is the delivery system in Japan. So they have this wonderful uh, Takubin service or courier service um, that really makes what I would call the, what is referred to as the last mile, which is this problem for all online retailers, doesn't matter whether it's wine, it's how to get your product to the consumer. And I recount that when I was in England last in, um, in March, I bought some wine from uh, maybe England's most famous retailer. Um, and when I asked when would wine could be delivered, they could only give me one day. They could not give me a specific time. So I had to stay at home from nine o'clock in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon when the wine was delivered. So that means extra hours wasted. In Japan, uh, you, could, you see on the right, you can schedule a time, a two hour time frame, up until nine o'clock in the evening. And that could be on weekends as well. I think over the last six months, I've, probably, I've ordered dozens of, of, of wines. Not one has been late. Always the wines, the correct wines come. For the last three months, it's been incredibly hot. They have chilled service and some retailers insist on using them. Uh, the service is affordable. Uh, it costs between 10 and $15, so it's not outrageous. 
Uh, wines can be delivered anywhere across the country, unlike, let's say, in America. Um, the only problem that is, is possible uh, is that in the medium or long term, along with many businesses, there may be labor shortages. But right now, it's no problem to get wine delivered at a time uh, of your choosing uh, to your home. I think the names on the, le on the left are not so important, but I think it's worth knowing that this hasn't come out of e e-shopping, e e-commerce. These companies have been around for a lot longer than the internet, and they're well established and across Japan. So just to give you some, some names um, for off-trade channels. So I'm going to talk about some who are only online on the left-hand side, on the right, uh, some who do online uh, and offline. So online only, one of the pioneers is winery Izumia, who's actually a Spanish wine specialist. So the point about that is that he's been in business for 21 years. So there is experience of online sales uh, in, in Japan. Another uh, wine merchant is online only is YNS Wines Tokyo, um, founded in 2008, uh, privately owned. And what he does, um, he puts a lot of wines up that have won prizes uh, or got high scores from Wineland, Pertot, Gambero, Rosler, Decanter. So, and then he adds his own commentary. So it's really a, a website for people who are enthusiasts. But I think the takeaway from that is that uh, wine scores can be useful in directing people towards wines. Uh, and the other one is Tuscany which has been around since 2001, and you will not be surprised to hear that with a name like that, that uh, they have an Italian focus. And they offer about 3,000 wines. Um, they do some direct import, which I thought was interesting. They, they direct import from about 20 wineries. Uh, they focus on really trying to create a good uh, relationship with their customers. The importance being to get repeat buyers. Um, so rather than using search engine optimization, they, they try to create added value. And we'll hear from Dario later, but uh, pre-pandemic, they were interviewing up to 10 winemakers a month and putting those uh, webinars online. So I think that's, that's quite, they have already, they're already doing this. Um, on the right-hand side, you could say Eon, I mentioned, is the largest supermarket in, in Japan. Uh, their online sales, 5%, and growing by, um, double digits, more than 10% per year for the last few years, where their in-store sales are static. So online sales growing double digits, in-store static. Um, the next one, Imadea, I mentioned, is a small family-owned, not small actually, so I've got five, five stores, uh, one in Ginza. They're actually a bit unusual because they don't go on Rakuten, Amazon, or Yahoo. They only sell standalone because they can control their own image uh, more carefully. Um, they're looking for organic growth. They also do some uh, direct import, and they have about 10% uh, of sales online. And the last one, Enoteca, I mentioned before, but uh, as they, they, they have 60, 60 shops across the country. Uh, they're owned by Asahi, as Thierry mentioned, the uh, breweries are very big in, in controlling the market here. So Enoteca, owned by Asahi, the 60 shops, but they have 35% of sales online, and the online volumes have doubled in the last five years. They're really capitalizing also on the trend for uh, mobile commerce, where Japan is the uh, leading country in the world, and uh, they have launched their own app last year, and they've launched a partnership with Line, L-I-N-E. -E. Line is Japan's answer to WhatsApp. So uh, I think they've been very, and they have 80 million, 80 million users. So they're, they've been very proactive. And of course, with 60 stores, they don't want to abandon that completely. So they're looking for synergies between online and stores. And if you're a member of Enoteca, you can search your local store and find out what they have in stock. Um, so what can wineries and regional bodies do. I said, well, I just spoke to the CIVB. This is the body that's uh, responsible for Bordeaux. Uh, they've been doing online promotions for over 10 years. So one of their goals is to promote uh, wines between 1,000 and 4,000 yen. Yeah, that's between 10 and $40. So they do promotions with particular um, wine merchants who focus on that set of the market. So that's something that they can they can contribute to support the uh, wineries that they work with. 
uh, Crestman is also a producer in uh, Bordeaux, and they say that just to something very simple, packaging, uh, those wooden boxes that you see for Bordeaux, um, Bordeaux wine. This is, obviously, if you go to a supermarket, no one wants to carry a huge wooden box back home. But online, if you've got a courier, um, the wooden box enhances the value, it enhances the image of the wine, and it can be delivered by courier. So that's something quite simple that can be done. And probably the last point um, is perhaps the most important for online. Um, I mentioned Jacob's Creek. So they're hoping to increase their percentage of online sales. And one of the things that is, is, is across online sales is wine sets. Everybody wants to buy wine sets and it's the way that uh, sales are increasing. So Jacob's Creek is now, as a producer, packaging their best-selling wines in sets and also making sets of wines that have won prizes in the uh, domestic competitions, for example, Japan Wine Challenge or the Sakura Wine Awards. So the takeaway is that is twofold. Uh, one, you've got wine sets, and second is uh, domestic competi wine competitions can be useful. So last slide, uh, challenges and opportunities. So we're all thinking that online can be great, perhaps a new route to market, but one of the things that everyone has mentioned is that uh, the price competition is very fierce. So what people have been doing is saying, oh, you get six bottles for 6,000 yen. And the next person will say, oh, you can get uh, six bottles for 5,000 yen, and so on and so forth. The profits are lower and the quality of the wine is also falling. Another challenge is uh, young consumers. You might think that they would love to buy online, but actually young consumers are the first set of people to stop buying wine completely because they're most worried about their jobs. So these are people who haven't tried to build up a savings. So they may not be the salvation for us. Uh, the other thing that people have mentioned is to be very careful what you put online to make sure it doesn't compete with your on-trade offerings. Uh, opportunities. So uh, a lot of people mentioned that their main buyers are middle-aged, older men. But in fact, ladies are half the wine drinkers in the country. So there's an opportunity maybe to promote more online sales to ladies. Uh, older, wealthier clients, normally they have been drinking uh, wines at restaurants. Now they've started to buy online. So the, the key is how to attract those people and, and how to keep them buying online. Um, so in summary, what I'd say is that all the foundations seem to be in place. It's just that the market is, the online market is not yet fully developed but everybody from the producer through to the retailer has an opportunity to support the market. Okay. Oh, very good. Very, very good. Very interesting. I have to say that uh, uh, when I was in Japan like uh, 20, 20 years back, and uh, uh, what I found is that uh, it's pretty much a market where uh, people like choose wine uh, if, uh, better if, if assisted, of course, for so restaurants or uh, supermarkets, and uh, many supermarkets that have... Uh, uh, the kind of sommelier uh, assisting people in, uh, in, uh, in choosing the wine. And uh, so that's why uh, I believe that uh, the, the, opportunity that, the opportunity that we have uh, talking about online is to provide uh, content uh, to, uh, for the people to choose by themselves and also to those people who assist the consumer uh, with the uh, quality contents about uh, uh, our wines, our, our winery, our history, our, our brand. So I, I believe that's, that can be definitely uh, an opportunity for all, all of us. Um, so uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Roddy. It was uh, very, very interesting and, uh, and super useful. Um, we, we now talk to, to Sato-san, who is the um, uh, store manager to a supermarket. So it's, a, uh, it's in a supermarket chain. So it's, a, it's very interesting back to uh, what we're talking about, uh, retail uh, sales. Uh, so Sato-san, please join us. Hello, nice to see you. Uh, good evening. Uh, I am familiar working for Pat. Did you hear me? It's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can hear you. Okay. I am a sommelier working for a public supermarket chain named Olympic. I am responsible of this liquor sale in a store in Sasurawa, suburban of Tokyo, about a one way, one, uh, one hour away from the uh, middle of Tokyo. Within five minutes, from major uh, train station 
and we are relocated in the middle of a wealthy neighborhood. Olympic、uh, has 45 food stores around Tokyo, of 11 have a professional liquor shop and sommelier as a manager. In average sale of alcohol, Weighs seven percent of food sales. That means, if the food、uh, market has sale of one million yen, the alcohol sale will be seven seventy、uh, thousand yen. Then the wine sale weighs about ten percent of alcohol sales. So that means, in average, if the supermarket has sale of one million yen, that means ah.、Uh, 700 yen for wines. That's the state of Japanese market today.、Uh, I, as in the first presentation by Ms. Yasuda, she says about half sale of Japanese、uh, wine sale is in supermarket, but it's sad we are still in deficit. We have a very have,、uh, tough time, even though we are successful wine shop.、Uh, As a supermarket wine shop.、Uh, today, I'd like to show you my shop, the shop I work. It's been within the supermarket. And at first, I want to show you what we sell besides wines. And that will show you, we have to show you the alternative products, or like、uh, alternative beer, alternative sake. Alternative whiskies, all kind of other things. Next, I'd like to show you only,、uh, our wine shop and the Italian wines in a supermarket wine shelves. And the last,、uh, I'd like to、uh, talk、uh, very shortly about personal impression for wine market in this COVID period and post-COVID period in Japan. Okay, stay here, sir. Okay, now the video is on. It's upside down, but <laughs> okay. Okay. Ah.、Uh... これで見れます見れます。はい。OK、uh,。Let's move the main shelf of Japanese supermarket for the wine. Looks like this.、Uh, what we have is very fine Vino da Terra and Authenticated must, which is not allowed in all.、Uh, many uh, usually about half the sale of、uh, wine sale in Japanese supermarket are these kind of alternatives, and we even have those paper bags, two two liters for. Nine six hundred ninety nine yen. So it's gonna be about four euro or so. These are the cheapest products we can offer in Japanese supermarket. Please let's move. We have some alternative whiskey. They are made from、uh, spirits, not the grain or malts. Or we even have alternative beers. And alternative sake. These are typical beer shelves in Japan. About six can of 500 milliliter, half a liter can, costs 878 yen. That means around one euro per can. That's not that bad, people might say. But actually, this is not. These are not beer. These are just the alternative, fake stuff. 
if this is a beer, it costs about 50% higher than this. These are very sad state of Japanese uh, alcohol market. So, uh, Japanese, what the uh, point of Japanese customers is, Japanese customers have no question about those alternative stuff. So, they drink alternatives and real stuff at the same thing. As for the sake, there are no definition for alternative sake. This is alternative sake, but one gold medal in a luxury sake conco. Oh, this is awful. So, let's then move to Italian wine shelves. Uh, okay, we have Japanese wines. We have several of luxury wines. Then we have wines that are Yeah, it's very nice Prosecco. It costs 130 yen. However, it's popular in this country. Uh, especially in supermarket, people tend to love sweet wines rather than dry. Actually, there are customers who ask for uh, red wine and they said, I want it is sweet or dry, even though these are the, what they are asking for. Then Italian steel wines. Uh, we have large collection of mainly uh, Piemonte. Toscana and Veneto, uh, wines from southern wine, southern uh, south is a bit more difficult than uh, Toscana or Piemonte. Maybe it's same, it's same in other countries, largely because they are not familiar with uh, grape varieties. Uh, it, <laughs> in supermarket, because there are very few guidance what, to, what wines to buy, they seek for some Cabernet Sauvignon. Chardonnay. If it's a name of some strange variety, this comes, they don't know that variety, so they do not buy the wines. Okay, uh, so far, uh, is there anything you like to see in this supermarket, sir? Yeah, well, why don't you um, show us some like high end, higher end uh, Italian wines? Uh, the other day uh, I saw like uh, some Tuscany high end, the cupole or. Okay. We have fantastic Barolos. Yeah. The price is 800, 800 yen. Or we have a very old Barolo of 2007. Or we have Luce. We have nice Brunello de Montalcino. And much of the Brunello de Montalcinos. Japanese people love some of the older, very old wines. Yeah. So this <clears throat> Brunel de Montalcino, even though it costs 3,780 yen, had very good sales in our uh, supermarkets. Well, we even uh, had uh, those, those are those wines something that people they just pick up or they ask to you? When, when talking about this category, they people, uh, when talking about this category of wines, so high-end Italian wines, people 
consumer just pick up or they ask to you as the, the sommelier in the in-store sommelier? Okay. Uh, those high-end wines in our shop is mainly uh, for the gifts. Ah, okay. 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 The customer who buy those wines could be non-drinkers. Yeah. Okay. Or people with no, uh, no information, no knowledge. They just have, uh, I have some money, I want to buy something expensive. Okay. So they have no idea what to buy. <laughs> okay. I but, introduce them nice burgundy yeah. or nice Bordeaux. But when I introduce Italian wines, have you ever cooked French in your home? They say no. Okay, how have you ever cooked Italian at your home? Yes. Do your kids eat Italians? Yes. How about your grandmother? She likes it. So everybody likes Italian wines, Italian foods. Everybody has cooked Italian foods. If you watch the television, there are programs about the Italian cuisine every day, almost every time. So I talk to them. If you buy this nice Valoro, you will watch that everyday Italian food program more seriously. That's when your wine story starts. It's not just open, sip, and done. No, 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 no. If you have nice Italian wine, you have to think about the bottle for a week or month or very even longer than that. Yeah, yeah, clear. That's something only Italian wine can offer. Nobody makes it French, French at home. Nobody makes American cuisine or nobody makes chili. Nobody knows what Chilean people eat <laughs> as a dinner. <laughs> so that's the advance of Italian wine. Yeah, it's correct. That, that, that's very important for uh, uh, also for wineries that uh, that uh, are trying to promote the, 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 the wines. It's important to understand how the, the, the consumption and the choice from the consumers are, are, are led. So they're very, very, very interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Sato-san. Uh, another aspect is a brand. We have Balolo of uh, no, it's not here. We have Balolo starting from 1980 yen. Yeah. It's gonna be about 10 euros. However, we do not have decent burgundy at 10 euros. And uh, if you want to have, uh, want to buy something like this, Chambelton, it costs uh, 1,000, how about 100 euro or so? But if it's Barolo, you can buy at the price of 10 euros. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows Chambertin or Barolos, but they do not know the difference between Chambertin and Barolo. So we can offer them how about Barolo? You can buy at 3,000 yen or 2,000 yen or 20,000 yen or even higher than that. Yeah. That is something only. Italian wine can do. Yeah, exactly, uh, exactly, exactly. This is uh, definitely one of the uh, our most uh, important uh, point of strength. And uh, yes, okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Stasso. We uh, we need to uh, to shift to the to the next panelist. Otherwise, we are going too long uh, on this. But it was very, very, very important to see how uh, wines are displayed on the shelves and which price range are are most uh, uh, most uh, important uh, in a. At least in a supermarket like uh, uh, like Olympic, and uh, uh, so it's uh, uh, now we uh, we are gonna uh, talk with um, uh, with Dario Bergamini from Etica Wines. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank you very much, and uh, uh, we will uh, uh, he will show us. Uh, 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 can you join us, uh, Dario, uh, with us? Yes, here I am. <clears throat> so as already anticipated, I'm going to talk about the COVID impact uh, on the consumer's behavior.
and more specifically about uh, online winery tours, the new form of sales approach through the web and social media that originated from this impact. Let me show you something I prepared. Okay, so as we've been told by Yasuda-san in her introduction, Italian wine market in Japan has been historically almost equally split uh, between uh, restaurants and home consumption. Anyway, especially for wines of a certain value, Italian restaurants have always been the main channel of distribution. Um, so as we can see from the illustration, yeah, uh, before COVID, the typical frequent customer of restaurants uh, or even like a specialized wine shop uh, was open to experimentation and uh, for suggestion of new wines he she never tested before. Suggestion made by sommelier or shop staff usually. The role of the sommelier being essentially that of educator, storyteller even, and salesman at the same time. Uh, as we all know, uh, COVID had a devastating impact uh, on restaurant scene in the first place. And now the consumer are shifting more and more to other uh, e-commerce platforms or supermarkets, like uh, Sato-san explained, for the wine purchasing. So this not only affected the route of distribution, but also had an impact on the average uh, value per bottle sold, being traditionally the web and supermarkets uh, preferential channels for cheaper wines. And even more relevantly, customers are now alone in the choice if it's not the case of a supermarket where a sommelier is. So they are oriented to buy wines they already know, as Sato-san explained, rather than experimenting new things. So what is missing in this passage is the educational uh, role, or I would say even more the storytelling entertaining aspect, which is very much appreciated by just Japanese customer. To overcome this difficult situation, a solution has been found by imported and distributors in new format like the online winery tours. And because of lockdowns, this kind of events started to replace uh, physical events like seminars or winemakers dinners around the end of Rectory this year. They are publicized directly from the importers on their website and social media accounts. And it's possible to find them listed in some wine dedicated Japanese web portal, portals like Winomi, uh, Love Wine Japan, as a, you can see the, the logo down here. Mm, they are quickly becoming the norm. And searching through these two main portals, I could uh, count around the 20 events already planned on in September. Typically, the customers uh, pay a fee that include uh, the participation and the delivery at home of uh, text and wines for tasting. And in some cases, there is a cheaper option for just participation without wines. During the event, there is also a live uh, presentation of the winery by the producer or by the, or by the Japanese host. And it's followed by a guided tour of the winery facilities, vineyard, uh, which can be live or even in some case uh, pre-registered in, for example, with images of the vineyards from a drone or something like that. There is a guide tasting uh, with sometimes pairing and suggestions with local foods. And at the end, there is a Q&A with the producer. The aim is to recreate the experience of a real winery tour in order to provide the same kind of memories for the participants, I would say. So, as a practical example, I'm now going to present a, a case where we as uh, Etica Wines have been involved uh, in the organization of the event. I would like now to show to yeah, let me check. Okay. Let's 
Sì, no? Eccola! Basically, there were 10 restaurants uh, and shops uh, in various locations in Japan, Tokyo, Nagoya, Osaka, Kyoto, everywhere. And they were all connected live. Plus, uh, the customers were, uh, who, who bought the wines in advance uh, at the shop could join from their home. Uh, at the wine bars and restaurants, Chambra wines were presented uh, at the tour uh, were on sale. Uh, buy the glass during the event uh, and uh, even food bottles at the end of the events for takeaway. Uh, Sengo Kyoko Sengoku, the importer uh, from her shop in Nakano, was the moderator and translator. And there were two live locations from the winery. The introduction took place at the winery shop where uh, we could assist at the live, the gogment uh, a la volée, the traditional method performed by the cellar master. I was attending the event at the Importer Wine Shop in Tokyo and uh, this live, the government got the Japanese customer uh, really excited. Uh, probably many of them uh, had never seen such performance before. And it gets me back to what I mentioned before. So the importance uh, of uh, entertaining, storytelling aspect for the Japanese customer. The second live location uh, was in the, in the crew vineyard, Vigna delle Forche, a uh, very steep vineyard in Dolomiti Trentine with an amazing panoramic view. There, were, uh, there was an explanation of the wines by the analogist and pairing with local foods you have seen. And finally, a Q&A uh, with the question uh, by the customer translated by the importer and host of Sengoku So results, uh, the event proved to be a success with many customers, not only consuming the wine at the shop during the live tour, but also buying bottles to take away. As a result, in only one day, there were the same amount of uh, wine sales uh, as during five days of promotion tour that was organized last year in 2019, when the winery ambassador came to Japan. And speaking with the importer, she also told me that these days she's seeing more and more uh, repeater buying of Chambra wines, uh, confirming that recreate the real atmosphere of a winery visit also recreated the same kind of impact and memories that lead to loyal customers. The feedback, uh, feedback was so positive that uh, the new, uh, the, the, now the importer is planning uh, new events, uh, uh, seasonal events like uh, live, live harvesting and so on. You know, uh, what is uh, impressing me is because uh, uh, since uh, uh, this uh, digital uh, revolution that uh, is occurring nowadays because of COVID, which is of course negative, but in this case is very positive, uh, they, uh, we are able to, to share experience that in the past was just like physical and, uh, and individual. Now you can uh, leave this experience and then you can share it straight away. This means that uh, that kind of event uh, like uh, become uh, more relevant uh, on the, uh, uh, all over the uh, social media, on Facebook, on, uh, on all, and uh, everywhere the people just reposted the experience itself. So it's, it's very, very, very common. I have, uh, I have other uh, suggestions for uh, uh, original tours I found on the two main portals I, I checked. Yep. It was an interesting uh, wine plus world heritage sites tour uh, in wineries near to these uh, UNESCO world heritage sites uh, with pairing with the wines of the 
that locations, and they were all sold out. 300 people particip could participate every time, and they were all sold out, and the cost was relevant for participation. Another format, interesting format, was wine plus cooking. Um, so uh, together with the, the wines, the, they send uh, the receipt at home. Uh, so customers can cook in advance uh, what they're going to test uh, in a mariage, uh, in a abinamento with, uh, with the wines. And this As a surprise, there were participation to hear you guys and discount shopping tickets. Quiz, certification, novelty, and plus uh, there was a Rakugo, Rakugo performer uh, host uh, explaining the wine. There was another, another like kind of like original, original tour. Wow. Very interesting. Like uh, it's a huge, uh, museum, a new market. And uh, yeah, in conclusion, <clears throat> in conclusion, uh, there are several advantages. Um, in this new format. Of course, in this particular moment when people cannot travel, they provide an experience that resembles traveling and really visiting wineries. But even during normal times, let's remember that Japanese people uh, cannot take long or frequent vacation. So it will be definitely something to repropose even when traveling will be an option again. Plus, there are many people that for many reasons cannot travel and they can be reached by this new format. Another fundamental aspect is that online events can exponentially broaden the audience. People from all over Japan uh, can participate at the same time. And this fact, as we've seen, we've seen in Gemra example, can save a lot of cost and have a huge impact of sales too. And plus, uh, at the end, uh, some Italy we have a beautiful landscape. Uh, we are a country with more world heritage sites in the, in the world, like getting back to, to the, the example. Uh, we have good food, uh, a lot of stories to tell, and usually we are uh, good entertainers too. So I think that this is definitely a format that suits well Italian wineries and uh, definitely something to repropose, I think, even in normal times. Yeah, you're right. You're definitely right. Uh, wow, that, 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 that's very interesting. And uh, I was impressed because I, I didn't see it. And uh, they, they just mentioned to me that it would be how, how it was, but I, I couldn't get that it was so uh, like engaging. Engaging. That's the, that's the word, I think. And uh, so basically, uh, just to put in a nutshell, uh, all the uh, thing of consumption now, nowadays are like half and half on, uh, on trade and off trade. And when talking about uh, uh, off-trade, uh, uh, people just buy the, uh, the wine and uh, uh, drinking at home. And uh, Japanese are amazing cooks, so they, they cook a lot at home. So you, you, you need to think about that. First of all, they cook a lot of Italian because they love it. And they, uh, there are so many TV programs talking about and teaching how to cook Italian. And, uh, but uh, uh, in general, we do not only have to focus, and this is something for the future, not to focus only Italian wine for Italian, uh, for Italian food. So just remember that people cook, so they, they just need to understand to learn how to use Italian wines with, their, with what they cook. So this is something we need to invest some attention on. And, uh, and as Dario was saying, uh, nowadays with the COVID-19, uh, of course we need to uh, to use whatever we have uh, instead of like, really, as I was saying at the beginning, we, we invest too much resources on activities that sometimes are not really affecting. Uh, in this case, uh, they provide contents, they provide ideas, they provide atmosphere, moods. They are very, very powerful tools. So it's something that uh, you definitely need to, uh, to consider. So we, we leave it around late, so uh, uh, sorry about, uh, about this, and thank you very much for your time and for your attention. 
And uh, thank you very much with, uh, to all panelists that uh, uh, they shared the, the pressure time with us, the pressure imp impression and insights. And uh, I, I believe that uh, now we have a clear idea of what to do nowadays, okay? Thank you, everybody. Uh, I hope that uh, uh, Japan will recover like uh, the rest of the world. But uh, as I said, Japan is in my heart. So I really need uh, Japan to be back to normality and push wines and Italian wines. Thank you very much, everybody.